Hi guys, and welcome to the channel. And to those return viewers, welcome back. Let's dive into some of the top Astra Militarum regiments and forces that emulate the special forces of today. So these days, there are quite a number of special forces depending upon the country of origin and duties they are expected to undertake. Though the universal likeness between all special forces units is the fact they are trained and equipped to a high standard and operate either independently or in conjunction with more mundane units. A summarised description in our own era is a country's armed forces that undertake covert, counter-terrorist and specialised operations. Given the variability in tasks, loadout and origin of special forces in the 21st century or third millennium, it is very safe to say that by the 41st millennium there are a host of human special forces formations available for you to learn about and even collect for the tabletop. In this video, we will discuss the typical Spec Ops role within the Astra Militarum, that of the Tempestus Scion, and how it relates to similar roles in the world currently. We will also give some honourable mentions to Astra Militarum regiments who are highly specialised in similar modes of operation. Besides a childhood of rigorous training and indoctrination within the fortified halls of a Scola Progenium, the men and women of the Tempestus Scions, previously in the law called Stormtroopers, lead lives of constant conflict and rigorous discipline. These operators are indoctrinated from a young age to put the needs of the Emperor of mankind and therefore the Imperium at large before their own. This mental conditioning paired with a lifetime of highly specialised and brutal training, shapes these individuals into honed killing machines, the best and the brightest of the Astra Militarum. Having formed strong bonds with their fellows, deployed in hellscapes otherwise unimaginable to the average human being, these troopers are perfectly in tune with one another's nature, quirks and character. It requires a strong bond and an unbreakable force of will to do battle in the 41st millennium, let alone to operate on a level that is considered specialised. Both Tempestus Scions and Astra Militarum regiments are expected to deploy to whatever war zone the Lord or Sector Commander sees fit, whether it be a hellish death world on which the plants are just as likely to devour you as the enemy is to shoot you, or half-mad planets overrun by heretic forces. Even then, a theatre of war not comparable to the current millennia is the void of space. It can be said that on top of terrestrial warfare and strategies, the men and women of the Imperium must also undertake and repel boarding actions in the cold of the void. One of the differences between standard line troops and more specialised formations, both these days and within the law of 40k, is an operative's mode of insertion. In the 21st century, a common form of rapid insertion is via the SPY system, which is an acronym for Special Patrol Insertion Extraction, and refers to a system of rope, harness and carabiners which allow a helicopter to lift and deploy several troopers at once, the suspended men treated as an external load. Another form of insertion is via parachute, using either static line or freefall methods the latter method being the harder of the two, and hence only used by highly specialised units. In the realm of 40k, a form of insertion, whether it be covertly behind enemy lines from low altitude or en masse, as 40k does best, is dropping from an armoured atmospheric aircraft, such as a Valkyrie, and inserting either behind enemy lines or straight into active combat. Scions are well drilled in this form of deployment, However, there are well-known Militarum regiments who specialise in this also. Those are the Elysian Drop Troops and the Harakoni Warhawks. When inserting via aircraft, such as a Valkyrie, personnel are often equipped with grav chutes harnessed to their backs, but otherwise will repel. This mode of insertion is dangerous in the way that a malfunction of equipment will likely lead to death, given the height a trooper is operating at when deploying, but also means that when an airborne infantry force inserts far from its base of operations, the heaviest equipment able to be deployed in support is either sentinel walkers or the lightly armoured Torox. A terrestrial insertion method for Tempestus Scions, which is more practical, 
in the vast, over-the-top deadly war zones of the 41st millennium is the Torox Prime, though there isn't much covert about this vehicle. A Torox Prime is utilised when Scions are operating in a more open and aggressive stance, with the squad inside often wielding specialised weaponry to the front lines, en route to take out a valuable target or extract an ally. The Torox Prime is an armoured personnel carrier which forgoes heavier armour for the ability to be nimble and traverse harsh terrain. For the special operative passengers within one of these vehicles, this makes for a bumpy ride, though in line with the ethos of our current era spec ops, it allows the crew within to strike fast and aggressively, exploiting holes in enemy lines or quickly delivering a well-armed squad of scions to their target through difficult terrain. To the point that a special forces operative is supremely well trained, as well as being taught how to use and wield varied equipment, can be seen in the Tempestus Scion's standard as well as specialised loadouts. Whilst the rifle of the standard Astra Militarum soldier is the last gun, a weapon of simple design which projects a focused beam of light which in turn vaporises its target. These standard last guns come in many patterns, though their ability to critically damage a target depends upon the range with its lethality diminishing over distance. The humble last gun also struggles to penetrate thick armour, which means Astra Militarum soldiers rely more on weight of numbers and therefore shots to bring down larger or more well-armoured foes. As we are aware though, one of the hallmarks of specialised forces is that they operate in small groups, so they must forego any advantage that weight of numbers could facilitate. Instead, the troops of the Tempestus Scions Regiment's standard armament is the Hotshot Last Gun, also known as a Hell Gun. These weapons are manufactured with an external power cell which is housed inside of a backpack fitted to the trooper's armour. This greater power source ensures the Hotshot Last Guns have a higher armour piercing ability than the standard Last Gun does. Another weapon, one considered the hallmark of the Tempestus Scions, is the Hotshot Volley Gun. This weapon utilises the external power pack in the same fashion as the Hell Gun, however it fires at a much faster rate, with a greater ability to penetrate armour, making it an excellent weapon for use against armoured infantry. Other specialised loadouts a trooper of the Scions will be trained to use is the Plasma Gun, Grenade Launcher and Chainsword. Squad leaders will also likely be trained in how to handle a Power Sword. Many country special forces operate fulfilling various duties, whether these be dependent upon a particular cycle, an individual skill set, or simply the forces needs at the time. I know in the Australian SAS, various duties exist, such as covert reconnaissance, recovery operations, infrastructure disruption, or even capturing subjects of interest, just to name a few. In the realm of 40k, this is still the case, with specialised formations such as the Tempestus Scions being much different to the point-and-shoot line troopers of the Militarum, as well as being very expensive assets. In the realm of 40k, where the enemies can be more supernatural and alien in nature, as well as the war zones requiring significantly more flexibility and ad hoc action, I don't believe cycling through roles would be as applicable in the theatres that Astra Militarum operates within. Instead of this, Scions must be not only trained, but most likely also psycho-indoctrinated to retain rigid standards and instantly recall knowledge for up to thousands of precise combat situations. Infiltrating close to or within enemy territory may be for the purpose of planting homing beacons to allow Imperial reinforcements to make planetfall en masse in a very particular geographical location, providing sudden and overwhelming force to the opponent. It may also mean going undetected to gather intel on enemy movements, estimated force strength, and, should the opportunity arise, the neutralising of valuable enemy assets or individuals. Conversely, a detachment of Scions may operate in a direct action role in support of a larger force such as a combined arms regiment. When deployed in this way, Tempestus Scions are the scalpel among a force of blunt cudgels. While on the offensive, the heavy ordnance the Astra Militarum are famed for will batter the enemy from afar. Heavy armour will rush to meet the foe, while simultaneously, thousands of troopers will fix bayonets, 
and charge enemy lines whilst taking opportunistic shots as to drench enemy positions in superheated last fire, encouraging them to keep their heads down. Considering the various specialisations as well as effective equipment a Scion squad wields, it is easy to see where they fit into this type of warfare. Prized and valuable targets belonging to the enemy, whether it be heavy weapons emplacements, officers or elite troopers, can all be targeted and dealt with by Torox mobile scions, whilst the average guardsman does the heavy lifting, selling their lives in scores. Now, when considering Imperial Guard regiments who also align with the character and standard of what could be considered Tier 1 or Tier 2 special operations, one must consider the standard of training above all else. There are a great number of various cultures and worlds within the Imperium, with the majority supplying a tithe of citizens for recruitment into the Guard. Considering the clumsy size of the Munitorum and the rather archaic way of doing anything worthwhile in the human realms of the 41st millennium, Astra Militarum regiments are more so treated as cannon fodder than they are as crack troops to be wielded effectively. This fact alone plays a major role when considering them for comparison to a force such as the Militarum Tempestus Scions. There are, though, a few regiments and particular units which stand head and shoulders above the main class of guardsmen, which I will detail. A lot of you won't be surprised at this first one, and that is the Cassican of Cadia. Cassican are a highly organised and well-trained force within the regiments of Cadia. Given the unflinching and stalwart reputation the Cadian regiments have through the breadth of the galaxy, it is unsurprising that Cassican, drawn from the most promising recruits during their initial training, truly are remarkable in their ability and skill. Alike their cousins of the Tempestus Scions, the standard loadouts within Cassican formations are the Hotshot Last Gun and Bowley Guns. However, their special equipment also extends to the use of Hotshot Marksman Rifles, Flamers and Melters. All the standard duties we have discussed regarding special operations of this era and that of the Tempestus Scions also pertain to the Cassican. The only difference is that Cassican will often fight alongside their fellow Cadians. The presence of Cassican units very much inspires their fellows. This is because Cadia, before its recent destruction at the hands of Abaddon the Despoiler, was a fortress world that bred a hardy people of martial bearing. The people of Cadia are proud to be named as such, and any one of them would aspire to be more akin to the Cassican, the very best Cadia has to offer. Another force, rather than entire regiment, that works in conjunction with its mundane counterparts are the Catachan Orc Hunters. Whilst the standard Catachan regiments are highly specialised jungle operatives, able to utilise a lot of special skills that are akin to Spec Ops forces, the Orc Hunters take this to the next level. Whilst deployed detachments of Orc Hunters will operate in field away from the friendly lines for weeks if not months on end, their primary tasks are disrupting enemy supply lines and patrols as well as gaining intel on the enemy, two duties very much in line with our era's special forces. Given a guardsman lives and breathes the military lifestyle, it is unsurprising that the women and men of the specialist orc hunters often acquire mannerisms and even behaviour of the Xenos they so famously hunt. The Tanith first and only are a storied and often underappreciated regiment who experienced a harrowing founding. During their initial loadout from Tanith, the world came under attack by forces of chaos, and so the world, its population, and all but one of the regiments were wiped out. The only survivors being the 1st Regiment under command of Colonel Commissar Ibram Gaunt. Hence, they were named as such. The achievements of this regiment are astounding in and of itself. However, the vast majority of soldiery would not be similar in skill level to that of special operatives. The regiment does, however, have a very in-depth understanding of fieldcraft, marksmanship, and knife skills. These core tenets, coupled with the fact that this regiment would often find itself in specialist situations such as missions sanctioned by the upper command echelons or operating independently in large-scale war zones using their own initiative to make decisions based on the core objective paired with the situation at the time, the Tanith first and only 
definitely have the potential to be considered highly skilled, and their core veterans certainly so. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate your support, especially if you've watched the video this far. I do hope this has given you some joy and entertainment. It was certainly fun to script and create. Maybe it's even inspired you to make a spec ops squad or force of your own for the tabletop. As I've said in past videos, I have plans for the channel, including the building of a tight knit community. So I would really appreciate it if you took the time to subscribe to the channel and even leave a comment with your thoughts on the content. Until next time, take it easy and have a good one.